guys, I'm Laurie Vitale. On this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen, I want to share with you how to make my flaky apple and almond tarts. They're like mini little tarts, not even tarts, more like a crostata, doesn't matter, they're delicious. Let's get started. I'm going to show you the ingredients you're going to need to make the almond mixture. It's really the same thing as the mixture that we used for the almond croissants. It's such a good filling, it works well on everything. The only difference in today is that I'm having the recipe, I only need half of it, I don't need as much. So, you need bring a little sugar, ground almonds, a little bit of flour, pinch of salt, unsalted butter that's been softened at room temperature. Actually, I had mine on the stove, so it's a little bit more soft than that. An egg, vanilla extract, and some lemon zest. I'm not using almond extract today because I want the almond flavor to be a little bit more subtle. Otherwise, it's going to overpower the flavor of the apples, and I don't want that. I want just a perfectly mellow almond flavor paired with the apples. So it's going to be delicious, and I'll share with you the uh, remaining ingredients in just a little bit. But for now, I want to get started on making the filling. So, it's going to be easier. I'm going to add the sugar and my butter, and I'm going to cream this using my handheld electric whisk. I want to get this really nice and creamy. So just give it like a, si um, a minute to two minutes. That looks perfect, really nice and whipped. I'm going to just scrape the sides of the bowl, and now I'm going to add an egg, vanilla, because everything's better with some vanilla, and a little lemon zest because I like to add a little lemon into anything with almonds because it really, um, it, it kind of cuts the, the, the overwhelming flavor of the almond. Although in this case, I'm only using a, just a, not even a quarter teaspoon um, because I'm not using almond extract. If I were using almond extract, I would definitely be needing to use at least a quarter teaspoon of the zest. But I'm going to use about a quarter teaspoon, li less than a quarter teaspoon, and it's going to be the perfect amount. So I'm going to whip this. I want this to be really nicely whipped for about two minutes, and then we will add the remaining ingredients. Okay. If it looks like it's splitting a little bit, don't panic. Add your ground almonds, flour, and the salt, and keep mixing for another minute. Okay, this is what it should look like. Okay, I am going to pop this into the fridge for about 15 minutes just to firm up a bit. And then I'm going to get my apples, my puff pastry, I'm going to preheat my oven, I'm going to get myself all situated and ready to build my little tarts, which are so easy. Now, what I have here is just a piece of puff pastry, a sheet of puff pastry that's been thawed. Um, and what I like to do is I like to just roll it out on a floured surface till it's like an inch bigger, half an inch bigger on each side. So that's just about where I want it. And then I like to just brush off as much flour as I can because I don't want it to be too doughy. But it's important that you have the flour when you're rolling it out. I also have my oven preheated to 400, 425, and two baking sheets with some parchment paper. I'm going to take a small bowl, and I need four, um, four little circles out of each one. Please do not panic if one's slightly bigger than the other, because, you know, this is homemade cooking. It's not always going to be perfect, and everyone's going to be the perfect size, because that's not... We don't have machines here. We don't have, it's not a factory, okay? It's Laura in the kitchen. It's my factory. So I can make things as wonky as I want them. I'm going to cut up, I cut out as big of a circle as I can out of all, I'm going to do another sheet of puff, puff pastry exactly the same, and then we will start filling. My second piece, uh, my second sheet of puff pastry is ready. I got four more back there. Now, what I have here are some Granny Smith apples. To my Granny Smith apples, I'm going to add just a little bit of sugar, a couple of tablespoons. I'm using a lot of apples here because I'm making about eight little tarts. And I'm going to toss these into the sugar. Had I thought a little bit more, I would have gotten a bigger bowl, but I love living on the edge. Let's say, as crazy as I'm going to get in life, so. That better be good. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of our almond filling, and you don't want to add too much. You want to add about, I would say, a tablespoon or so of your almond filling, and you want to leave an edge. So you see I'm leaving like um, 
between a quarter and a half a teaspoon, a uh, half a teaspoon, a quarter and a half an inch. I don't want to add too much, but I also don't want to add too little. You leave a little bit of an edge, and then you take your apples, and then you kind of just overlap them a little bit on the filling. You've got to leave that edge. And then I just like to sprinkle a couple of sliced almonds on top. Not too many, but just a few. Now I'm just going to pop these into my preheated oven for about 20 minutes or until they're lightly golden brown and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. My lovely tarts were in the oven for 20 minutes exactly. Now what I like to do when I have two baking sheets going in at one, I like to put one rack at the lower third and the other rack at the upper third of the oven and then just halfway through switch them for even baking so that they get beautiful golden brown all over. And then I like a dusting of powdered sugar. I have let these sit out for about 10 minutes, 15 probably. They smell so fantastic. I'm gonna just dive in because that's just what I do. I want to kind of cut into, not really cut into it, but pull it apart for you. <gasps> I love every everything that's going on. It's like magical to me. Mmm. That is incredible. The creaminess of that filling is out of this world. The subtle almond flavor is perfect with the apples. If you want your almond flavor to be even stronger, put in almond extract, but that will take away from the apple flavor, so you're going to have to remember that. But these are just, look at the bottom too, lovely, golden brown and crispy. The apples are perfectly cooked. I just, they need to be in your life, like right the second. Go to lauraindukitchen.com, get the written recipe. I hope that you make them and share them with me on social media. And I hope that you enjoy them as much as I do. I'll see you next time. Bye.